Hello everybody, welcome back to Hollywood Sports. Guys, we're talking about depth chart positions. Man, we're talking about franchise mode in Madden, NFL 19, man. We're talking about franchise mode. Everybody was talking about we got to fix franchise mode. We got to we gotta come up with something immersion in franchise mode. We just got to work on franchise mode. But this is a big part of franchise mode, guys. We're talking about depth chart positions, okay? Your player depth chart positions is the foundation of your team's chemistry and synergy. We're talking about chemistry and synergy. And we're talking about your team now has a specialist section with seven depth chart positions. Now they're talking about specialists, guys, in your depth chart. Specialist section. These are specialists, guys. We, we can put guys in special positions and on our depth chart, on our depth chart to make our team strong. And when you say specialists, that means they're good at what they do, right? When you say specialists, they're good at what they do. So your team now has special, I mean specialist section with seven depth chart positions. These positions ensure the right players are on the field in the right situations. Again, guys, it's, give, it's giving us control to put players in the right situation. When you got players in the right situation, players with the right archetypes, when you put a team together, you create chemistry and synergy. I think I talked about that before on one of my other videos. Chemistry and synergy. When you got synergy, you got a team working together. You got a little piece here, you got a little piece there, you got a little piece over here, you got a little piece over there. You put together a puzzle. You put together a organization. You put together a great team. All right, guys. So I'm loving this, man. This is this is what you call. I, I see why they call it deep dive because we're diving deep into this thing, man. When we talk about franchise mode, right? We're talking about specialist positions within the depth chart. Okay, very important, guys. Very important. Now we're talking about nickel and dime defenses, right? We all run nickel and dime and defenses during when when it's time for the defense to pass the ball, right? We run nickel and dime defenses. Okay, it says use rush left end. Okay, rush left end is one of those positions. So you got to know the guys, your player's archetype to fit him in that position. I don't think you can really put anybody in that position when you're talking about rush left end. So obviously, a left end sounds like a 3-4. A right? You got a 3-4, a left, you got a defensive tackle, you got a left end and a right end, and two outside linebackers. So we're talking about a rush left end, a rush left end, which probably would fit my man, all pro, Ryan Kerrigan, okay? He would probably fit that archetype. I don't know what his archetype is yet, we don't, but it seems like he would fit that archetype, rush left end, and the nickel or the dime defense, right? Then we have rush defensive tackle. Defensive tackle, okay. You got the defensive tackle down, right down, right there over the over the, over the daggone center, guys. You can call him a nose guard if you want, but I think the nose guard is in the four three, if I'm not mistaken. But a defensive tackle is right there, man, right at that center. All right. So you got to rush defensive tackle to bust up through that middle to get to that quarterback. A rush defensive tackle again in the nickel and the dime defense, okay, during the pass. Pass, this is, we're talking about pass defense right now. Rush defense. Okay, then we have a rush right in. We had a rush left in, now we have a rush right in. Okay, hoo hoo hoo, which is probably gonna be uh, 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 my man Payne from Alabama. <laughs> On the Redskins uh, defensive line, baby. Okay, uh, the, the right in. Then we have another position in the nickel or dime defense, which you're, going, which you're going to be in your depth chart. These are the seven specialist positions, okay? The next one is a sub linebacker, a sub linebacker. Okay, then we have a slot cornerback, a slot cornerback, a cornerback that can handle guys in the slot, okay? So whatever, his, whatever that cornerback's archetype is, he got to be able to handle those slot receivers, okay? Uh, 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 like a, uh, uh, we're gonna talk about Danny Amendola here in a second. He's a slot receiver. Jamison Crowder for the Redskins is a slot receiver. So when you put when you put that guy in that cornerback position, 
the slot cornerback, he's got to be able to handle those guys in the slot. Man, this is so beautiful. That takes the that takes the pressure off your linebackers. Maybe you want to blitz your linebackers. Maybe you want to block, drop your linebackers in coverage. It depends on what coverage you pick on the, in that nickel and dime defense, guys. We can actually design a beautiful team. <laughs> Oh, man, if this all works, guys, if this all come together, I told you, man, we're going to have a great game. If this stuff comes together. If this stuff comes together. But right now, guys, it's a deep dive, man. They, 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 we, 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 got the, we got the pistons under the hood. We got the pistons in the engine right now turning. We just got to know how to put this engine together, baby, and build a fast, fast car, right? A Ferrari. That's what you can call it. I'm, I'm building a Ferrari, a defense, or I, I'm building a bulldozer, or I'm building a tank defense. All right? All right, guys. So now, then it says, these players are best for downs when the offense is likely to be throwing the ball, when you got that nickel and dime defense. Okay? These are players you want, those specialist positions, when the, when the offense is likely to throw the ball, which is mostly third and long, second and long. Sometimes they can flip up, but but in the percentage, and, and, and but but there will be a high percentage they're going to throw the ball. Okay, now the run stoppers are leaving the field at that point, right? Because on first down, most likely they're trying to run the ball. Second down, maybe, but third and long, you're going to put your nickel and dime defenses out, and you're going to take your uh, you're going to take your run defense, your run stoppers, and they're going to be leaving the field. And the pass rushers are stepping in, in that nickel and dime. So that's how we can design it, guys. That's how we can design it. This is so beautiful. So those guys are going to come into the game automatically. You know, a lot of times we, we don't know how to do, remember in the sliders you do substitutions? Well, once we build these archetypes, put these guys in the depth chart, they're automatically going to come in on third down in that nickel and dime defense. You put them in those specialist positions. That rush, that rush left end, that rush defensive tackle, that rush right end, that sub linebacker, and that slot cornerback. Right? You're automatically going to come in. Some of those guys are going to already be in the game. But if you have, let's say you have, uh, 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 let's say you have a uh, defensive tackle that's good to stop the run. His architect said he's a run stopper, right? But then, but on third downs, he's not a good pass rusher. Then you can bring that. Then you can bring in your rush left end or your right right, uh, uh, right end or, 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 or your defense, your rush defensive tackle, right? Man, this is so great, guys. This is this is good stuff, man. I'm excited. It, it, it makes playing football more immersive, more realistic, more exciting, more replay value. We got real play emotion. We're Madden is really starting to get this game rolling, guys. They're starting to get this game rolling. Okay, now, now you got your your nickel and your dime guys in uh, during the pass play. Okay, now let's talk about Danny Amendola for a second. The slot receiver, the slot wide receiver depth chart position will be the best players on your team using the slot receiver overall. Again, like I said, Jameson Crowder. But in this instance, they're, they're talking about uh, Danny Amendola. Okay? This will ensure that players like Miami Dolphins, Danny Amendola, are used in the slot, but guys that are better outside will stay outside. You know? Like uh, Paul Richardson just came up from the Seattle Seahawks, going to be playing with Washington. He's going to be a deep threat. So you don't want to put a deep threat in the slot. You can to keep to burn down the middle of the field, but most likely he's going to be on the outside. So you leave him on the outside. Now, let's talk about power halfbacks for a second. Power halfbacks is used in goal line formation. This is another specialist position now. Power halfback is used in the goal line formations and other heavy sets as your running back. He will be the best player on your team to tote the rock between the tackles using new power back overall okay great stuff man great stuff he's automatically going to come in on the goal line situation all right if you have an elusive back as your best half back and want to keep him in on goal line formations just swap him in 
into the power halfback starting position. You have the control. Again, guys, they're putting control in our hands in this franchise mode. A lot of people think control means I can control my running back when I'm running. Or I can, con no, you controlling your organization. You have control, guys. We have control. Okay, now, let's talk about the third down running back, which is a guy like Chris Thompson for Washington. You know, Darius Guy's probably going to be the main guy in the backfield. But when it comes to third down, Chris Thompson's a great third down back. So he would... I hope this is part of his archetype. I'm thinking it would be. Now it says the third down running back um, now uses the new receiving back overall. Oh, okay. Receiving back overall. Now Chris Thompson can't catch the ball out of the backfield. Because sometimes, man, you got to check it down. It might be third down, but hey, it's better than throwing that interception. If nobody was open, you go through your progressions, you look at your first wide receiver, your second wide receiver, your third wide receiver, whatever formation you're running. Or four or five wide, you leave that back in the backfield, and if you if you're not having you if you're not having them block, um, if you're not having them block, then you want to have them come out of the backfield. He could be that third down. He can, uh, Chris Thompson's guys get break tackles. He can get in the open field, make stuff happen. So it's okay, it's okay to check him down as a receiving a new receiving back overall. Okay, your third down running back will come in on third down for many formations. Some playbooks even have your third down running back come in on shotgun formations for other downs too. Okay, guys, again, we have control. We can, we can make that third down back or put him in any formation that we want to. Okay, also, man, they even brought kick returners in and punt returns. Guys, hey, kick and re they're also specialist positions, guys. Okay, now, the CPU will use starters to return punts if their kick return rating is high enough so we, we I think we already used to that if we have guys like uh, you know I had Chris uh, 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 Crowder Jamison Crowder on punt returns even on kick returns sometimes because he has that agility he has that speed okay so that's what they're saying starters return punts if their kick return rating is high enough so they're gonna have a kick return rating guys is that's high enough you can put them back there it says this means that guys like Antonio Brown will be there doing the punts but won't see the field during kickoffs okay because of the, the kick uh, 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 the punt return uh, rating so guys the depth chart is the foundation when you put it all together they have to be on a depth chart before they can get on the field so Every aspect of franchise mode has to be important. If you, if, you, if you don't focus on one, it can screw up another one. You have to focus on your depth chart when we're talking about player ratings, guys. We just my, my previous video, by the way, if you didn't see it, talking about player ratings, the link is down below. Click on that video. Go check it out. Right after you finish watching this one, you can watch my previous video talking about player ratings. Player ratings are very, very important when you talk about archetypes. Player ratings could create that organic gameplay. Okay, now we're talking about the depth chart, which could create that chemistry of your players playing together. Team stands for together, everybody achieves more. Man, we actually can build a wonderful organization. Sure, we're going to make mistakes. That's when you do trades, or you might find that free agent out there. Or we're gonna go through. We're gonna talk about the draft, which I talked about in my earlier video, guys. We have control right now. We have control. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, talking about setting up our depth charts. It is the foundation of building a great team. And as always, hopefully, I will see everybody that's watching this video on my next video, guys. I appreciate you get watching these videos, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.